Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvelous video. This time, every villain that you can find in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Where there are heroes, there are bound to be villains. And no one does villains better than, <laughs> you guessed it, DC. Not only have we been introduced to various villains on paper in DC Comics, but these villains have also been brought to life by amazing animators and voice actors. In fact, Warner Brothers and the comic book industry giant knew they needed to up their game following the massive success of iconic shows like Superman the Animated Series and Batman the Animated Series. Thus, the Justice League television series was born. Today's video is a comprehensive catalogue of all the villains featured in both the animated Justice League and Unlimited shows, both of which feature a whole horde of fantastic villains. Intrigued? Keep watching. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Legion of Doom in the final season of Justice League Unlimited, the League faced the most formidable group of villains in history, the Legion of Doom. The extraordinary League of Villains was the polar opposite of the traditional superhero group from comic books. The Legion of Doom, founded by Gorilla Grodd to grow the secret society, included many notable DC Comics antagonists, including KG Beast, The Electrocutioner, and Silver Banshee. Members were free to conduct their own activities, whether they involved burglary or something else, but they could request help from the group if superheroes got in the way. The usual charge for such services was 25% of the gross pay for the appropriate job. Despite having several encounters with the League, members of the Legion were able to keep them from learning of their existence. Before Lex Luthor assumed command of the Legion, Gorilla Grodd served as the Legion's secret commander. There were no spoken protests at the coup to overthrow Grodd, probably because of Grodd's recent effort to transform all of humanity, including the Legionnaires themselves, into apes. However, Luthor's preoccupation with Brainiac hurt his ability to lead, and when he moved the Legion's headquarters into space, in a last-ditch effort to achieve his objective, many of the villains rebelled against him, headed by Gorilla Grodd, starting a civil war within the Legion of Doom. Interestingly, the title of the Justice League Unlimited episode, I Am Legion, alludes to the Legion of Doom, despite the fact that the Secret Society's name was never mentioned in the show. According to Matt Wayne, they planned to use the moniker Legion of Doom on screen, but DC Comics had other plans. Brainiac before leaving Krypton soon before its destruction and embarking on a journey across the galaxy in search of knowledge, Brainiac served as the planet's supercomputer. He attempted to destroy the sources of the knowledge on a universal scale to leverage its own value and eventually turned himself into a nemesis of Superman. Brainiac was undoubtedly one of the League's deadliest villains. After surviving the events of Superman the Animated Series, the AI computer made an appearance on Apocalypse with the intention of copying the planet's data and eradicating it. Finding himself in a precarious position and wanting to save his planet, it, Darkseid struck a deal with Brainiac, promising to lure the members of the Justice League into Darkseid's lair in exchange for his planet's freedom. He then went to the Justice League and asked them for help against Brainiac, essentially double-crossing and betraying both Brainiac and the Justice League. At the end of the Twilight storyline in Season 2 of Justice League Animated, it was assumed that Brainiac died when his ship and asteroid blew up. However, Brainiac was later discovered to be alive inside Lex Luthor's body, despite being originally believed to have been destroyed. The universe was almost destroyed when the two combined into one being. In the end, the Flash was the one who unleashed his Speed Force abilities and eliminated Brainiac. Dark side. This burly-looking villain is a nightmare for everyone around him. Portrayed in the series as having a menacing skull-like head with bright red eyes, Darkseid is best known as one of the greatest foes of the Man of Steel and the ruler of the evil planet of Apocalypse. He's a menace to the Justice League, and they often get tied up trying to stop his destructive efforts. Darkseid is also known for consuming other people's anguish and despair psychically to fuel himself. Further, up until his appearance on the show, it's said that unknown numbers of planets have been conquered and enslaved by Darkseid throughout the cosmos. Darkseid initially appeared to ask the Justice League for help in order to fight off Brainiac, who came to his assistance despite being heavily suspicious of the villain. However, Darkseid, true to his nature, betrayed both Brainiac and the Justice League and then battled Superman until Batman used a boom tube to remove Superman from the scene leaving Darkseid on the burning Brainiac ship. The asteroid the ship was on exploded, and it was assumed that the ruler of Apocalypse was no longer alive. Later, Darkseid reappeared with some of Brainiac's strength after Lex unintentionally revived him instead of reviving Brainiac. Darkseid once again came dangerously close to destroying both Earth and Superman, but Luther ended up being his downfall because he found the anti-life equation that Darkseid had been looking for all his life. Turn it up, baby. We need to fight, to fight. 
Royal Flush Gang. The Royal Flush Gang was embroiled in some of the more sinister tales in the Justice League animated series. If the card game related name is any clue, all hints point toward the Joker. The Clown Prince of Crime kidnapped metahuman subjects from a government facility, outfitted them in playing card attire, and sent them off to battle the League. The members of this gang included Ace, Jack, King, Queen, and ten. All the members had different metahuman capabilities. For example, Jack was extremely flexible and had superhuman elasticity that allowed him to stretch and bend his limbs into whatever shape he wanted. Queen, on the other hand, had the capacity to telepathically control metal. She had the power to make any metal in her area react to her thoughts, making it do anything from simple levitation to forming armor around her body by liquefying metal and making weapons out of the suit like a sword or a mace. King, the leader of the Royal Flush Gang, was able to control fire, a super cool ability ability in general. And last but not least, Ace had a unique ability. Ace was the Joker's hidden weapon, a strong metahuman with the ability to make anyone crazy with a single glance. In the series, Ace actually turned on the Joker and stopped the attack she'd been asked to carry out. However, sadly, Ace's powers escalated out of control and she ultimately perished in one of Justice League Unlimited's most heartbreaking moments. Down. Uh. On the ground. Uh. The Joker. Everyone is familiar with the Clown Prince of Crime. This iconic character has been portrayed in various different ways all across DC media and in the Justice League animated series. Joker is seen wearing his iconic purple suit, slick back dark green hair, wide red lip smile, a pointy nose and his favorite prank flower in his breast pocket. He appears mainly in three episodes of the Justice League series and is shown to be a remorseless sociopath. His character is a continuation of his appearance in Batman the Animated Series and thus is in continuation with his origin as a criminal who was later dunked into a chemical bath that intensified his sociopathic tendencies. His character, while obviously being dark, considering he's literally a mass murderer, had a comedic angle to it as well. He often planned out his heists or schemes in accordance with jokes and punchlines, and even got offended when others didn't get the joke and he had to explain it. He considered himself to be the world's funniest person and the biggest enemy of Batman, and he'd spare no effort to destroy anyone who asserted or tried to prove otherwise. Additionally, because of his more clown-like look, his crimes and schemes frequently incorporated humor. Like Lafco Toy Factory or the defunct world of the future fair fairgrounds, he also frequently used abandoned or otherwise closed toy or candy factories or buildings with a comedy or clown motif as hiding places. Considering the fact that Batman and the Joker have often had a symbiotic relationship with one not being able to survive without the other, Joker was always a thorn in Batman's side, which also led him to become an adversary of the Justice League itself. Thanagarians. One of the biggest surprises from the Justice League's first season, the forces of Thanagar, is next on our list. They were a warlike race from a planet known as Thanagar and were humanoid in appearance. In fact, they could be distinguished from humans only by the presence of two sizable feathery wings on their backs. Originally, Thanagar was a brutal world and their culture was primitive and wild. The Great Old Ones were a pantheon of extra-dimensional beings that the Thanagarians once prayed to. The leader of the Old Ones, Ikthultu, granted the Thanagarians agriculture, mathematics, and philosophy, the cornerstones of their entire culture, in exchange for sacrifices given to him. The Thanagarians, however, ceased worshipping them as time passed and decided to no longer submit to any higher power. Their own weapons were made using what they knew about the Great Ancient Ones. Because of this, their nth metal weaponry, like Hawk Girl's Mace and General Hro Talak's Battle Axe, had mystical qualities and can combat Superman's invulnerability or the power of the Green Lantern. Under the pretense of friendship and peace, the Thanagarians came to Earth in an effort to thwart a danger from beyond the galaxy and the plotline The Terror Beyond. Everything appeared to be fine as Hawk Girl vouched for them, adding credibility to their claims. Unfortunately, Hawk Girl was revealed to be a covert operative of the Empire, and it was made clear that Earth was the Thanagar Kingdom's upcoming conquest. The Thanagarians soon launched a full-scale invasion of Earth imposing martial law, depriving citizens and arresting Justice League members and any other heroes who would oppose them. The invasion began successfully, but the Justice League's efforts and Hawk Girl's betrayal of her people eventually foiled their plans, destroying the bypass and forcing the Thanagarians to flee Earth in defeat. Amazo. Amazo, an android, was one of the League's more sophisticated adversaries on the show. After the late Professor Ivo passed away, Lex Luthor found a robot that the scientist had created, a complex android named Amazo. 
This robot was built by Ivo using nanotechnology, which gave it amazing powers and capabilities that Lex would soon discover for himself. Luther then decides to take care of the android because of the android's innocence and his father-son relationship with Ivo. However, as is often the case with Lex, when he realized the true extent of Amazo's powers, he decided to use the android as a weapon against the Justice League. This android was able to duplicate the bulk of League members' abilities when Lex coerced the android into attacking the League. However, it also acquired all its flaws, including Superman's susceptibility to kryptonite. Amazo eventually learned of Luther's trick and fled the planet, not wanting to be involved in Luther's misdeeds. Amazo was also referred to as the most powerful creature in the world by Luther. A simple breakdown of his powers is enough to prove this statement. Amazo could duplicate someone's skills, equipment, DNA signature, and powers just by looking at them. Amazo first made use of his capacity to imitate the extraordinary characteristics and arsenal of each of the seven original Justice League members. Amazo then developed into a nearly omnipotent being during his cosmological explorations, effortlessly defeating the entire expanded League. He can teleport across unknowable distances, downsize into a subatomic universe, shunt complete planets to other dimensions dimensions as well as easily retrieve them undamaged instantaneously, among many other superpowers and skills. With all of these improvements, Amazo is now pretty much indisputably the most potent being to have ever existed in the DCAU. In his enhanced state, he also has flight, super strength, high resistance, vast energy modification, psionic abilities like telekinesis and telepathy, super hearing, and a host of other superpowers. Strength. Lex Luthor. We could obviously not miss this iconic bald-headed enemy of the Man of Steel. All of those familiar with Superman and his rogues gallery know about Lex Luthor. In the DCAU, Lex is a shrewd businessman who is able to expertly navigate both the legal and illegal sides of businesses and, thus, has amassed a large fortune. Due to his immense desire to be seen as a legitimate business owner, Luther is often seen donating to charity and philanthropic causes. However, the truth is, he's a criminal, and in Justice League storyline Injustice for All, his criminal nature is finally revealed thanks to a sting carried out by the Justice League where he admits to bribing officials. In fact, until he's pardoned in the episode titled A Better World, Lex Luther's career as a clean businessman temporarily comes to a stop with this particular plotline. From this point on, he's either seen in jail or on the run from the law. While he's sent to Strikers Island as a punishment for his crimes, he manages to break out with the help of Ultra Humanite and even forms one of the first supervillain groups to ever feature in the Justice League animated series, the Injustice Gang. Further, another major revelation comes to light in this episode, and that's the fact that Luther developed a rare and incurable blood cancer due to his constant exposure to kryptonite, which he carried on his person in case he ever ran into Superman. Obviously, he blames Superman for his condition. Leading the Injustice Gang, he then sets his mind to do one thing, destroy the Justice League. While he does fail in his attempts, he's later cured of his cancer by Brainiac. Sorcerer Felix Faust The first sorcerer on our list, Felix is a renowned practitioner of dark magic, who's majorly portrayed wearing loose royal blue robes with gold accents and piercing blue eyes. Faust, a well-known archaeology scholar at the time, started experimenting with the occult arts. Faust was excluded from academic circles after his peers found out about his extracurricular endeavors. He thus swore retaliation and spent his time researching dark magics. All the individuals who made fun of him eventually vanished under unexplained circumstances. Hades, the Greek underworld god who was at the time imprisoned in the pits of Tartarus, was able to make contact with Faust. In keeping with his name, Faust struck a deal with Hades in which he agreed to free the deity in return for the god's greatest knowledge. As is seen in the show, Faust went to Themyscira in his quest to liberate Hades, terrifying the Amazonians while he acquired the first of the relics that, when combined with the others, would create a kind of key that would open the pit's gates freeing Hades. In order to free her mother and sisters, who were held captive by dangerous guardians who defend the key pieces, Faust discovered the relics and manipulated Wonder Woman into scouring the globe for the remaining artifacts. Nevertheless, Hades was influencing Faust the entire time, and when he was momentarily liberated, he gave him his own flavor of ultimate knowledge, pain and suffering, and greatly progressed his aging. Faust thus vanished into dust and was dragged into the pit when Hades was brought back. However, his spirit was extracted and saved by his former student Tala, but that too was destroyed and the last little speck that was left of Faust was doomed to be tormented by Hades for all eternity. Open your eyes that you may see! 
Despero. Despero is quite easy to pick out in a room full of supervillains because of his striking appearance. With purple skin, a large build, three eyes and fish-like fins running from his head down his spine, it's hard to miss him. Interestingly, Despero's skin tone in the comics was pinkish orange. However, for Justice League, it was altered to a purple hue to set him apart from Katmai Tui. There is a rumor that the color purple was selected because Keith David previously provided the voice of Goliath, a purple character from the Gargoyles animated television series. Coming to his history and background, Despero was a Kalinorian peasant who was born with a disfigurement, a third eye smack dab in the center of his forehead. He was banished as a result of his appearance and was sent to roam the wasteland. At some point during his exile, the mystical flame of Pytar rescued Despero from being attacked by a gang of criminals. He was then given incredible mental and physical abilities that he could transmit through his third eye. The flame also showed its wisdom by telling Despero that Kalinar would one day be a paradise. Despero misinterpreted this message because he was filled with rage and hate, and thought he'd been selected to rule the galaxy. As a result, he used his newfound mental abilities to oppress his brethren. Despero rapidly ascended to power as the ruler of Kalinor, using his formerly despised deformity to create a connection to the Pytar. He created an empire known as the Legion of the Third Eye, while controlling the entire planet of Kalinor. The Pytar was contorted into an object of hate by Despero's greedy abuse of it, which fueled his despotic reign. He expelled anyone who he deemed was not deserving, and chastised those who disagreed with him. Soon, Despero started making plans to increase his status after securing his hold on Kalinor, hoping to bring the entire galaxy under his control. In the Justice League episode named Hearts and Minds, only the Justice League's and the Green Lantern Corps' intervention was finally able to stop his despotic plans. Injustice Gang We've already mentioned the Injustice Gang earlier in this list because this famous supervillain group was formed by the one and only Lex Luthor in an effort to destroy the Justice League. In fact, the League's first ever conflict with a group of criminals was with them. The original Lex Squad, which also included the Ultra-Humanite, Copperhead, Star Sapphire, Solomon Grundy, Cheetah and The Shade, was formed after Lex Luthor broke free from Strikers Island. Banding together, they fought the League and in a shocking turn of events as they seemed to put up a tough fight. The fight ended with Batman being wounded by Copperhead's Venom and Copperhead being taken captive by the Justice League, a pretty decent trade-off considering the rest of the gang was able to flee. However, once the Joker forced his way onto the squad, things started to go south. The Joker caused confusion and problems to spread throughout the squad after he successfully captured Batman and proved his worth to Lex, who originally hadn't wanted the Clown Prince of crime in his squad. However, the Injustice Gang was defeated as a result of Batman's ability to make use of his arrest to influence the group's members to turn against one another. He successfully charmed Cheetah, pitted Ultra-Humanite and Grundy against each other, and foiled Joker's plans, thereby completely dismantling the seemingly dysfunctional Injustice Gang, who seemed to stick around only because Lex was paying them to help him. A terrible turn of events for a terrific group of villains. Justice Lords. There seem to be an endless number of evil groups and squads waiting for their chance to take down the Justice League, and here's another one. The Justice Lords were a central group of characters in one of the more memorable and significant plot lines in both the first season of Justice League and Justice League Extra. As the story follows, in a different reality, Lex Luthor was elected president and killed the Flash soon after he gained the presidency, infuriated and disturbed. The League rebelled, and Superman killed Lex before assuming control of the planet. They were, essentially, the Justice League, but from an alternate reality with a different name. Even their history was the same, and diverged only when Lex became president of their world. The Justice Lords reorganized into a planet-wide governing body after Superman assassinated President Luther and they immediately started working on a plot to defend humanity from itself. The Lords decided when to hold elections, free expression was all but non-existent, and any disruption of the peace resulted in a prompt arrest. Superman's heat vision had lobotomized many of the villains that the Lords had previously encountered to render them placid and harmless. The Justice Lords' costumes also experienced significant changes during this time as well, so appearance-wise, the costumes set the two teams apart. Further, to solidify that the world was indeed very different, the Joker, who had become innocuous after receiving the treatment, was put in charge of the updated and attractive Arkham Asylum, where the criminals were later housed. The Justice Lords subsequently discovered the Justice League's world captured and replaced the League, and then started demonstrating their particular brand of justice. In order to deprive the Justice Lords of all of their authority, 
The situation compelled the League to cooperate with their vile adversary, Lex Luthor. The five Justice Lords were stripped of their powers and sent back to their own world after the Justice League succeeded in working together with Luthor to build an energy disruptor. Despite their triumph, the Justice League was plagued by the Justice Lords' atrocities for years to come, acting as a persistent warning of what might happen if they pushed things too far. The Imperium The formation of the Justice League was prompted by this group of villains they encountered, the Imperium. The Imperium was an army of parasitic, shape-shifting aliens that attacked and captured different worlds. They'd previously invaded Mars, but Jean Jean's, the planet's last survivor, had managed to freeze them in place. The Imperium's precise origin is unclear. It's understood that they originate from the far reaches of space and feed on peaceful civilizations to live. Jean Jean's estimates that the Imperium first reached the solar system about 1,000 years ago. By absorbing and replicating the Martian's telepathy and shape-shifting abilities, they nearly wiped out all life on the Red Planet. Their characteristics are both unique and scary. The Imperium are amorphous beings with usually white bodies that have red and black splotches on them. They resemble bipedal creatures in their typical shape, but there are no obvious sensory organs. They can absorb qualities from other species and thrive off draining psychic energy from other creatures. Further, after their confrontation with the Martians, they developed the capacity to change their form. The Imperium, who originated in the far reaches of space, are nocturnal creatures with no protection from the sun's radiation which can instantly burn their pale bodies. The Imperium leader was, however, able to endure the sunlight for a longer length of time than his subordinates, and was shown to be stronger than the rest. These aliens placed their sights on Earth after being unintentionally freed by astronauts from Earth. Only when Batman, Superman, and the remaining heroes banded together were they able to halt the planet's devastation and finally wipe out the invaders, forming the Justice League in the process. Vandal Savage Vandal Savage, one of the League's most enduring comic book foes, caused a stir in the first season of the Justice League animated series. Originally making an appearance in a tale in which the League's protagonist returned to Earth to find it transformed, they learned that Vandal Savage had gone back in time and altered the course of World War II. It turned out that he'd used technology to invent a time machine, go back in time and take control of the Nazi regime from Hitler. Having future technological knowledge, he ensured the victory of the fascists and became the supreme ruler of the entire world. Savage was subsequently disclosed as being an immortal entity who had impacted historical events for years after the League traveled back in time to stop him and assist in preserving the intended outcome of World War II. His misdeeds didn't stop there, however, and he later showed up once again with new plans to control the world. Coming to his immortality, the way he gained it is interesting, to say the least. Vandal, originally known as Vandar Raj, was witness to something that would forever alter the course of his life. His prehistoric clan saw an asteroid hit the planet 25,000 years ago. The night was cold, and the asteroid offered warmth. So Vandar Raj walked up to it and slept by it while his fellow tribesmen fled from it in terror. It's unknown where the boulder originated, but its heat and radiation changed him forever. He didn't understand that he would never age until a few decades later. He also gained miraculous physical skills as a result of this transformation, like instantaneous healing. He took advantage of the opportunity for limitless education that his slowed aging provided to acquire as much as he could throughout the ages, and it is said that he even ruled various civilizations over the course of history under various different names. Gorilla Grodd As you can already tell by his name, Gorilla Grodd is, well, an evil gorilla. However, if you think being a primate makes him less intelligent than us, huh, then think again. This one is a super-intelligent ape hailing from Gorilla City, and is often best known for being the founder and leader of the Legion of Doom before Lex took over. In the end, when the Legion of Doom became torn apart by a civil war with Lex and Grodd loyalists fighting against each other, the two villains faced off in an epic battle. While Grodd physically dominated the fight, he was tricked by Luther who then sent him tumbling out of his spacecraft and into the vast darkness of space. His history is quite interesting. Crod was originally a scientist working in Gorilla City. He created a headgear that gave him the ability to influence other people's thoughts. He was prevented from using it in the city by the security team of Gorilla City, but he managed to evade arrest and flee to Central City, where he came into conflict with Green Lantern and The Flash. After Flash messed with a couple of wires in his mind-control helmet and deceived the gorilla into using it, Grodd appeared to have been rendered normal. 
Everyone believed he was mentally comatose because his brain had been scorched by this. However, not only did Grodd recover from this, but he also stopped requiring the helmet to exert mental control over others. While Grodd's intelligence was on par with that of Luther's, Grodd was more methodical and cool-headed in his planning, and he never let his rage or desire for vengeance get in the way of bigger objectives. Further, he was also extremely strong. Even the strongest normal human beings couldn't match Grodd's strength and endurance as a gorilla, but he preferred to serve as a leader and organizer rather than engage in real combat, which he thought was beneath him. Even though Grodd had extraordinary strength, he couldn't compete with superhumans like Superman. Aresia, a rogue Amazonian. A beautiful name and an even more beautiful woman. Aresia was actually a rogue Amazonian. A misandrist whose life's goal was to eliminate every single male from the world. This is clearly not what the Amazonians stood for, and thus, her actions caused them a lot of grief. This blonde-haired villain is also, interestingly, Diana's adoptive sister. Coming to her origins, Aresia's native nation was devastated by war when she was a young child. The mother and daughter boarded a freight ship to flee the commotion. The ship was unfortunately assaulted by pirates while at sea, and Aresia was the only other survivor besides the male captain of the ship. Aresia was taken by the ship's captain, who swam her to safety on Themyscira's shores. However, he passed away from exhaustion. On the beach, Aresia was discovered by Hippolyta, who took her in. She learned Amazon fighting tactics while on the island and was magically given Amazon strength. Hippolyta also taught Aresia misandric philosophies, particularly the notion that men are not essential to life, and this would become a slippery slope for the young Amazonian. Aresia had to live by herself in entirely in solitude as part of her final training to truly become an Amazon. Aresia used this time in the tower to study books about biology, chemistry, and magic that she'd obtained from the outside world. These books helped her come up with her plan to eradicate men from the planet. However, in her attempt to eliminate all men from the planet, she ran into the Justice League. Initially taken aback by her Amazonian powers, they were able to counter her advances. In the end, Aresia died fighting for the unfortunate cause that she believed in, as the jet she was on board exploded and crashed into the ocean, taking her with it. Lord Orm This villain is a representation of classic brotherly rivalry just like we see with Thor and Loki. The evil and cruel younger sibling of Aquaman is Lord Orm. He's shown as wearing golden armor with a green cape, a golden crown, and a large golden trident. Orm is best known in the DC comics as Ocean Master, one of Aquaman's fiercest foes. He's made several attempts to assassinate his half-brother and usurp the kingdom of Atlantis. According to Bruce Timm, the decision to not use the name Ocean Master for Orm was made because it was felt that it would make the program sound too ridiculous. As far as the Justice League animated series is concerned, he appears as the primary villain in the episode titled The Enemy Below. In this episode, after hiring Deadshot to kill his sibling, Orm ascended to the position of the Regent of Atlantis. He also had an army ready to fight the surface dwellers. Orm then took his infant nephew to a cliff next to a volcano, found him next to Aquaman, and used him as a bargaining tool to get Mira to cooperate. Orm was pleased with himself and boasted about killing them both, attributing it to the surface dwellers, and finally securing his legitimate throne inheritance. He left, leaving Aquaman and his unborn child to die in a fatal fall. But as we all know, Aquaman is no quitter. But the way in which he saved his son is worthy of praise. He cut off his own hand to save his baby. Thinking that he'd successfully killed his brother and nephew, Orm armed the Doomsday Thermal Reactor, an Atlantean weapon of last resort intended to melt the polar cap and submerge the entire planet, using plutonium from a US nuclear submarine so that he could rule the entire world. Aquaman showed up promptly and attempted to disarm it. Orm then confronted him and even won the battle, thanks to the trident. But as they fought, the ice bridge gave way beneath Orm, who fell and clung to its edge. He then pleaded with his brother for assistance, but Aquaman declined, accepting that this was the path his brother had chosen, and as a result, Orm paid for his actions by falling into the abyss to his death. I'll take a detour. Deadshot Floyd Lawton better known as Deadshot, is a killer for hire who will kill anyone and anywhere because his only motivation is to earn money. He enjoyed considerable success as a hitman for many years before being apprehended by the authorities and joining Task Force X. Deadshot's unfortunately not seen in a major role in Justice League or Justice League Unlimited. However, he does show up primarily as an assassin for hire, paid by Lord Orm, to kill Aquaman. In the episode The Enemy Below, 
Aquaman ascends to the surface and meets an international conference of world leaders to discuss pollution. Unfortunately, his method is anything but diplomatic. He defiantly demands that the surface countries stop polluting the oceans and encroaching on their space. He storms out in fury after the world's leaders accuse him of acting irrationally. As he leaves the premises, a bazooka rocket fired by a sniper at that precise moment strikes the sidewalk in front of Aquaman, severely hurting him. The sniper in question? Yep, yeah, you guessed it. Deadshot. Having failed in his objective of killing Aquaman, he tried again, but this time it was a ruse set up by the rest of the League members to identify the mysterious assassin. Thus, his identity is revealed and Superman eventually captures Deadshot after a drawn-out pursuit through the streets and sewers. He sarcastically acknowledges that someone paid him to kill Aquaman, but he wouldn't reveal who. After Batman takes over the questioning, Deadshot eventually confesses that he has no idea who his boss is, but he was given payment in gold. Batman determines from the gold that they were undoubtedly recovered from a sunken ship, proving that the person who ordered Aquaman's murder is from Atlantis. Thus, Deadshot unintentionally gave away his employer. Get him! Injustice Guild the Justice Guild of America, a group of superheroes located in Seaboard City on an alternate Earth, had the Injustice Guild as their archenemies. The Justice Guild and the Injustice Guild were thought to be fictional in the mainstream Earth because they appeared in well-known comic books in the middle of the 20th century. However, it appears that the creators of those comics unconsciously tuned in to the events of the alternate Earth while creating their stories. In the events of the episode titled Legends, the Justice League was sent to the reality of the Seaboard City supervillains known as the Injustice Guild, revealing them to be very real threats. This evil team consisted of four members, Music Master, Sir Swami, Dr. Blizzard, and Sportsman. Magician Sir Swami had apparently endless powers that came from a wand that was always by his side. Master used an accordion that could produce extremely loud sound waves. Sportsman was adept at all types of sports, using his skills to his advantage and weaponizing things such as footballs and other sporting equipment. Last but not least, Dr. Blizzard had the ability to create and wield ice. When the Justice League landed in Seaboard City, the Injustice Guild sprung into action, committing a string of crimes according to the four ancient elements to see who could commit the best one and successfully destroy both the superhero teams. However, their efforts were thwarted by the Justice Guild, aided by the Justice League. Sorcerer Morgana Le Fay A strong and malicious witch from Arthurian times, Morgana Le Fay was also King Arthur's half-sister. Her sole objective, which she'd been slavishly pursuing for centuries, was to place her son Mordred on the throne of Camelot and, consequently, the entire universe. Notably in the show, she always concealed her real features under a beautiful mask. Eventually, Morgana managed to keep herself and Mordred young until she was able to make her son the King of Camelot. She had to routinely rob young people of their youth in order to maintain her own whereas Mordred had the power of eternal youth. Finally, Morgana and Mordred located the Philosopher's Stone at a Gotham City library. This is when the sorcerers came into conflict with Batman and the rest of the Justice League. Unfortunately, things didn't go her way, and once her son got hold of power, he cast his mother aside and banished all the adults from the world. However, the Justice League came in clutch, and they tricked Mordred into turning into an adult himself which broke the spell and turned him into an old man. Morgana restored the world after realizing that she'd lost and left the world alone, retreating to live out eternity taking care of her now-aged son. Although she should not be underestimated at all. Her knowledge of the arcane arts is immaculate, and while in order to make her spells irreversible, Morgana needed all-powerful magical objects like the Philosopher's Stone, she was still capable of casting spells that could change reality as a whole. She could also invade and control people's minds and absorb people's youth. Doctor Destiny. This skeleton-looking villain dressed in blue is a nightmare in the most real sense of the word. John D, a low-life prisoner who acquired the powers of the ESP, goes by the alias Dr. Destiny. After the Justice League conducted a raid, John D, a low-level LexCorp employee, was discovered guarding illegal weapons in a corporate warehouse. He was detained and transported to Strikers Island, where he agreed to participate in an ESP experiment known as the Materiopticon. During his time in confinement, D was driven over the edge when his parole was rejected and his wife Penny revealed that she'd found someone else. D thus sneaked into the doctor's lab during a prison uprising and subjected himself to the full force of the ESP device. It initially sent him into a catatonic condition, but when he awoke, it fully restored his extrasensory abilities. Then he broke out of jail and pursued Penny. He entered her dreams, assumed the identity of Dr. Destiny, and began tormenting her mind until she became insane and died as a result of his evil actions. Then Dr. Destiny invaded Jon Stewart, Hawk Girl, Flash, and Superman's dreams as well. 
He played out their greatest anxieties by trapping each of them in a dream. Talk about him being a nightmare. However, his conflict with the League ended when he lost to them. Later, he also joined the Legion of Doom and became one of Lex Luthor's loyalists. However, the last that we know of him, he later died in a blast. Heart of Darkness Evil Snake Spirits The Heart of Darkness was a crystal imbued with the evil spirits of the snakes of a race called the Ophidians. They were a species of humanoid snake-like creatures that once inhabited Earth thousands of years ago. They notably revered the moon and favored darkness over light. Ophidians, snakes that walked like men, engaged in conflict with humans over which race would control the world. When they saw that the epic fight was being won by mankind, which ultimately drove the Ophidians to the brink of extinction, they decided to do something dark. In a last-ditch effort, the last Ophidians sent their spirits into a dark gem that would later be called the Heart of Darkness during a lunar eclipse. Anyone who came into contact with the crystal would be taken over by the spirits of the Ophidians and motivated to wipe out humanity. The people of Morphia committed their entire lives to protecting the crystal from slipping into the wrong hands. However, one day or another, it was bound to fall into the wrong hands. But whenever danger to the world arises, the Justice League comes to the rescue. The Heart of Darkness was obliterated, and the Ophidian souls were expelled by the Justice League following an unsuccessful effort to trick the League into using an anti-fusion device to put out the sun. The leftover shards, which undoubtedly held the reptilian creature's souls, were likely taken away by the superhero team and hidden away to stop anyone else from succumbing to the vengeful enchantment of the Ophidians, putting an end to the vengeful snake spirits. <laughs> Secret Society Another gang of villains put together by Gorilla Grodd dubbed Secret Society included Killer Frost, Giganta, Parasite, Sinestro, and Shade, and was the precursor to the Legion of Doom. Grodd made a point of promoting a more unified group front as soon as it was formed in order to prevent the internal strife seen in Lex Luthor's Injustice Gang. Clayface's escape from Morgan Edge's mansion was the focus of Grodd's ultimate recruitment strategy. Killer Frost killed Morgan during the mission, and the society was effective in freeing Clayface. Then Grodd persuaded Clayface to join his group. Further, Grodd secretly using his new mental abilities to give his squad the advantage enabled the secret society to defeat the League in their first encounter. Later, it was revealed that Grodd had secretly observed the League for weeks using spy cameras, manipulating their feelings until the Leaguers began yelling at one another and eventually disbanding the League after blaming one another for that defeat. A truly genius move. After dividing them, the society was able to capture each hero, and they then broke into a football stadium's half-time performance to kill the heroes in front of everyone. John Johns, who fooled the villains by pretending to be Clayface, thwarted the plan. As his companions were now conscious of Grodd's deceptions, John set them free. In full view of the stadium's packed spectators, the society squared off against the League one last time. But the League came together, unified once again, and comfortably beat the society. The League then immediately reformed after reaching an agreement with one another. However, the fact that an evil group came so close to disbanding them is a huge deal. Band of Supervillains This group is better known as Superman Revenge Squad and appears in the Justice League episode titled Hereafter. As their name suggests, they are a group of villains whose sole purpose is to harm the Man of Steel and take revenge on him. A Superman Revenge Squad variant made up of Calabag, Toyman, Livewire, Weather Wizard, and Metallo makes an appearance in the series as they launch an attack on Metropolis. The Justice League defeats the other members of this evil group, however, in a shocking twist of events, Toyman seemingly kills Superman by blasting him with a massive energy gun. However, all is well in the end since it was disclosed that Superman was blasted 30,000 years into the future as a result of the Force and was able to come back with the aid of Vandal Savage. But I think this is yours. Mongol Mongol is a ruthless warlord and conqueror from the planet War World, who's known for his incredible strength, durability, and intelligence. Mongol first appeared in the episode For the Man Who Has Everything of the Justice League Unlimited. In the episode For the Man Who Has Everything, Mongol played the main antagonist who used a parasitic alien plant called the Black Mercy to trap Superman in a dream world. The episode began with Superman being ambushed by Mongol and subdued by the Black Mercy, which attached itself to his chest and lulled him into a dreamlike state. In his dream, Superman experienced an idyllic life on Krypton, where his parents were still alive and he was happily married with children. However, as he began to realize that the perfect life was not real, he struggled to break free from the Black Mercy's hold. In the meantime, Batman and Wonder Woman, who were also attacked by Mongol, 
work together to locate Superman and defeat Mongol. They ultimately managed to free Superman from the Black Mercy's influence by physically removing the plant from his chest. Despite Mongol's defeat, Mongol remained a powerful foe in the Justice League Unlimited series, often using his immense strength and cunning to try and conquer other worlds. Mongol considered Superman to be his only true adversary, which was a testament to his strength. He demonstrated his immense power by completely overpowering Wonder Woman, who was known for her skilled fighting abilities. Even after being punched several times in the jaw by Wonder Woman, he remained relatively unfazed, indicating his durability. Mongol has access to highly advanced alien technologies, which he uses to intimidate and manipulate entire planets into ruin. He combines his psychological tactics with brute force to control his opponents and achieve his goals. nuclear-powered robot. The initiation episode of the Justice League Unlimited featured a giant robot that was powered by nuclear energy. This robot went on a destructive rampage and caused widespread damage. The Justice League arrived on the scene to stop the menace, but their initial efforts didn't really work. The team soon discovered that the robot was created by a group of scientists who wanted to protect their country from foreign threats. But things didn't go according to plan, and they lost control of it. The scientists possessed carbon rods that could disable the robot's reactor, but they were to be inserted into a specific cavity in its chest. Captain Atom then tried to use his powers to absorb the robot's energy, but he couldn't handle the overwhelming amount of radiation. Supergirl and Green Lantern's efforts also went in vain, and unfortunately Green Lantern ended up getting seriously injured in the process. This caused him to forcibly fly into the atmosphere, where he exploded in a burst of energy. Ultimately, Green Arrow also stepped up to the challenge, and after two failed attempts, he broke the final rod into pieces and tied a fragment to the end of an arrow. With this, he was able to successfully disable this chaotic robot's reactor. Supergirl then destroyed the robot to its very core. The robot was powered by nuclear energy, and the radiation that it emitted was virtually limitless. Even Captain Atom, who has the ability to absorb radiation, couldn't handle how strong the radiation was. It had a weakness that the Justice League discovered. Anything that could block or diffuse radiation could disable the robot. This became their main strategy for taking down the robot as they searched for a way to stop it before it caused even more destruction. Mordred. Mordred is the son of Morgana Le Fay, and a villainous sorcerer who possesses immense magical powers. In the episode Kid Stuff, he banished all adults from the world with a powerful spell and set himself up as the ruler of a children's amusement park. So, what really happened? Mordred stole an amulet of first magic from his mother Morgana in a remote mountain temple. He then cast a spell that would banish all adults from the world. Meanwhile, the Justice League was fighting some villains who were trying to rob a gold vault. Mordred's magical wave washed over them, sending both heroes and villains to a parallel dimension with the rest of the world's adults. Mordred then set up his kingdom in an amusement park, which was gothic-themed. He turned himself into an adult, subjecting himself to his own spell, and thus traveling to the other dimension. The junior Justice League members eventually managed to get the amulet away from Mordred. In the end, he used his remaining powers to transform himself into a grown-up man. Mordred is skilled in wielding magical artifacts and can even absorb their powers. He's also competent with axes and swords, and holds expert knowledge of modern technology, such as computers and video games. After gaining control of the Amulet of First Magic, Mordred's powers become even more extensive. He could create objects and living creatures from nothing, animate statues, alter his size and age, release energy blasts from his hands or eyes, become a giant, banish people older than him to a shadow dimension, and even create his own kingdom. Despite his immense power, Mordred is not a flawless being, and in fact, holds a major weakness. And it, of course, is his mentality. Due to never maturing as a person during his eternal youth, he still has the mind and personality of a child. This makes him impatient, arrogant, and easily tricked by the Justice League. <laughs> Ares Ares is the god of war from Greek mythology and is often depicted as a powerful and ruthless warrior who seeks to spread conflict and violence throughout the world, believing that war is the ultimate test of strength and a way to one of the gods. He has a variety of abilities, including superhuman strength, durability and agility, as well as the ability to control and manipulate weaponry. In the Justice League series, Ares often clashed with the heroes, particularly Wonder Woman, who saw him as a corrupt and dangerous influence on humanity. This warmonger was obsessed with starting wars and conflict, so in his workshop, Hephaestus created an Annihilator, which was a suit of armor that he had ordered. Ares tested the armor's abilities and later took it to the northern faction in Kaznia. There, he demonstrated it to Nardok, 
the leader of the Northern faction. Ares planned to sell the armor to Nardok, who was struggling financially. Wonder Woman, along with Hawk and Dove, went to Kaznir to stop the ongoing civil war. When they reached the battleground, they witnessed the Annihilator in action and realized that it couldn't be defeated through conventional means. Hawk and Dove proposed that the two sides negotiate. In the meantime, Wonder Woman confronted her face just to find out the armor's weaknesses. During this, Ares captured Dove and disguised himself as Nardok. When the Annihilator approached the southern camp, Dove tried to negotiate with Ares, who was using the Annihilator to fuel the conflict. Wonder Woman and Hawk intervened, and with Dove's help, the Kaznians realized that they'd been used all this while. They decided to stand down, and Ares disappeared, vowing to find another war. Cadmus, a secret organization. Project Cadmus is a genetics research facility that's dedicated to studying and experimenting on metahumans and creating clones. They engaged in various unethical practices, such as creating a clone of Supergirl, who they plan to use as a weapon against the Justice League. They also manipulated public opinion and instigated a conflict between the League and the government, leading to a battle between the two factions. Cadmus is portrayed as a secretive and shadowy organization in general that operates outside the boundaries of the law and often uses unethical means to achieve its goals. They were shown to be willing to experiment without consent and to create powerful weapons and technologies that could be used to control or harm others. Cadmus had built a history of conflict with the Justice League regarding national security and sought to neutralize them. This conflict often involved acts of violence and deception. While Cadmus might have had some legitimate concerns about the potential dangers posed by superhumans, their actions and methods often crossed the line into villainous territory. They were willing to use whatever means necessary to achieve their goals, regardless of the consequences for others, which made them a significant threat to the superhero community in the show. Doomsday. Doomsday is a powerful and nearly invincible villain who poses a serious threat to Justice League's existence. In the series, Doomsday was brought into existence as a result of Project Cadmus, where he was designed to be a stronger and more advanced version of Superman. Emil Hamilton utilized a genetic sample to create him, but he was engineered to be superior to Superman in every way possible. Doomsday was subjected to a series of brainwashing simulations that were designed to degrade and shame him, which fueled his anger towards Superman. In the episode Doomsday Sanction of Justice League, this villainous character played an important role. It started with Batman accusing Amanda Waller, the leader of the Cadmus Project, of secretly working against the Justice League. Waller justified her actions by claiming that the government ordered Cadmus to prepare defenses against the League in case they turned rogue. Batman, however, suspected that Lex Luthor was funding Cadmus and sent the question to investigate. While this was happening, Waller fired one of her scientists, Dr. Milo, who then discovered that Doomsday was a clone of Superman, created with the intention of utter chaos. Doomsday was released and he went on a mission to kill Superman. Waller ordered General Eiling to sanction Doomsday by firing a nuclear missile at San Baquero, where the battle was taking place. Batman finally managed to stop the missile, but his ship crashed. Superman defeated Doomsday by throwing him into a volcano, which caused the island to be destroyed. Justice League gathered aboard the Watchtower to hold a trial for Doomsday, who was imprisoned in cool magma. Superman attempted to reason with Doomsday, like Milo, and told him that he'd been manipulated by Cadmus. However, Doomsday was unrepentant and vowed to continue trying to kill Superman if he ever managed to escape. Realizing that Doomsday was too dangerous to be kept on Earth, Superman decided to use a Phantom Zone projector to send him to a penal dimension. Doomsday, angry and vengeful, warned the Justice League that they would regret their decision. What are you? Your problem solved. Professor Milo Professor Achilles Milo is known for his immoral scientific experiments in the field of genetics. He was employed as a scientist for the Cadmus Project in the Doomsday Sanction episode of Justice League. Despite having ample resources and expertise, Milo was unable to create a stable and controllable subject. One of his experiments on a warthog resulted in the destruction of his laboratory. Another warthog experiment with superpowers caused even more devastation. Consequently, Milo was demoted to a less important role. In retaliation, he sought revenge by freeing Doomsday who had regained full brain function. Milo made a deal with Doomsday to seek vengeance against Cadmus and solve both of their problems. But upon encountering Doomsday, Milo became terrified. Doomsday swiftly killed Milo by crushing his head off screen. When Walla learned of Doomsday's escape, she initially blamed Milo and threatened to punish him harshly. However, she soon discovered that Doomsday was responsible for killing Milo. We've been expecting you. 
Kronos. Kronos, also known as David Clinton, was a time-manipulating villain in the Justice League Unlimited TV series. In the two-part episode, The Once and Future Thing, he served as the main antagonist. In part one, Weird Western Tales, Kronos used his time-bending technology to travel to the Old West and alter history. The Justice League followed him and teamed up with famous cowboy heroes Jonah Hex and Batlash to stop him. In part two, Time Warped, Kronos continued his quest to change history, this time by traveling to the future and allying himself with a group of supervillains called the Time Trapper's army. Kronos traveled to the future and planned to conquer it by altering the timeline to his liking. Batman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern once again followed him, but this time they were joined by Warhawk, the son of Green Lantern and Hawk Girl from an alternate timeline. Together they tried to stop Kronos from altering history and creating a dystopian future ruled by him. Kronos' powers mainly revolve around time manipulation and control. With his abilities, he can travel through time and change historical events, manipulate the speed of time, create time paradoxes, and even erase people and events from existence. He can also use his time manipulation abilities in combat, making him a formidable opponent to superheroes. Additionally, he's highly intelligent and skilled in engineering and physics, which allows him to create advanced technology that aids his time-traveling pursuits. Give in to Granny. I'd rather die. Granny Goodness Granny Goodness is a character from the planet Apocalypse, ruled by the evil god Darkseid. She is a fierce and sadistic woman who serves as one of Darkseid's chief lieutenants and is responsible for training the elite soldiers of Apocalypse, known as the Female Furies. In the series, Granny Goodness played a pivotal role throughout the course of events. She held Oberon, the assistant of Mr. Miracle, hostage and asked him to rescue Kalibak, the son of Darkseid, from the X-Pit, Apocalypse's impregnable prison. Granny got engaged in a power struggle with Vernon Vunderbar and needed Kalibak to legitimize her claim to the throne. Despite being initially reluctant to help Granny, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, and Flash decided to rescue Kalibak, but not before Flash secretly saved Oberon. They managed to escape the prison and brought Kalibak to Granny, but Jean Jeans, a member of the Justice League, revealed that Kalibak was actually him in disguise and that Oberon was never really in danger. Granny was known for being fiercely loyal to Darkseid and his rule over Apocalypse, and would stop at nothing to maintain her power and control over the planet. This wicked character is a powerful villain who possesses a variety of powers and abilities. She's one of the most feared leaders of Apocalypse, and her strength and cruelty are legendary. As a resident of Apocalypse, She's incredibly strong, durable, and has extraordinary endurance. She's also an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and her skills have been honed over her many years serving Darkseid. Additionally, Granny Goodness has a genius-level intellect and is a master manipulator, able to persuade even the strongest-willed individuals to do her bidding. One of her most potent weapons is her ability to brainwash and torture her victims. She uses various methods to break their will, including physical and psychological torture. Alien Self-Replicating Robots In the series, the robots were a significant danger that both the Justice League and the army had to confront. These robots are massive and resemble spiders, and they come from an enormous alien structure that landed in the Nevada desert. The robots have the ability to absorb local materials, which enables them to increase in size and strength, making them even more challenging to contain. Although the League and the Army attempted to stop the robots using conventional weapons, they quickly realized that those methods were ineffective. As a result, the League resorted to using the Watchtower's binary fusion generator cannon to create a barrier around the area and evacuate the nearby towns to buy time to come up with a new plan. As the story progressed, the Justice League learned that the robots they were facing were all controlled by a central program known as the Dark Heart. The Atom, an expert in nanotechnology, proposed a solution to end the threat by destroying the core program located within the original structure. To accomplish this, he and a group of flyers shrunk down to a microscopic size and infiltrated the structure. Once inside, the atom disrupted the Dark Heart's blood flow, causing a flood that destroyed the construct and deactivated the attack robots, ultimately putting an end to the threat they posed. These self-replicating huge machines that absorbed local matter to grow bigger quickly became a formidable force. The conventional weapons used by the League and the Army were ineffective against them, and it took the League's binary fusion generator cannon to dig a trench and buy time to evacuate nearby towns. Additionally, the robots were controlled by a dark heart that existed in each of them, making them even more dangerous. It was only through the efforts of the Atom and the other flyers that the threat was finally neutralized by disrupting the dark heart's blood flow and causing a flood that destroyed the construct and deactivated the attack robots. Floyd Lawton, aka Deadshot, meet Task Force X.
Task Force X Task Force X was a team of criminals who were offered amnesty in exchange for their services in a top-secret mission. Led by US Colonel Rick Flagg, the team consisted of Deadshot, Plastique, Captain Boomerang, and the Clock King. Their mission was to break into the Justice League's Watchtower HQ and steal a powerful combat robot called the Annihilator. The team successfully infiltrated the Watchtower disguised as members of its support staff and defeated several superheroes along the way. However, they faced resistance from Jean Jeans, who defeated them until the Annihilator tore him in half allowing the team to reach the transporter platform. In the end, the team managed to transport away the Annihilator, but they left behind Plastique, who was severely wounded. Flag turned over the Annihilator to Project Cadmus and informed Deadshot that he must serve in Task Force X for five years before he could go free. The Watchtower crew discovered that one of their own, Vance, had passed inside information to Cadmus, and they could no longer trust their staff. The Task Force X is not a particularly powerful team in terms of physical strength or superpowers, but they are skilled in their respective areas of of expertise, such as explosives, planning, and combat tactics. They rely on their abilities to work together as a team and their access to advanced technology to accomplish their objectives. Are you all right? Have to go. Can't let it happen again. Huntress and Question Huntress's most well-known version is Helena Bertinelli, who's the daughter of a mafia boss and a vigilante who seeks to fight crime and bring justice to the streets of Gotham City. Unlike many other superheroes, Huntress doesn't have any superhuman powers. Instead, she relies on her exceptional physical abilities, combat skills, and training to take on criminals. She's a skilled fighter and marksman with expertise in martial arts, weaponry, and tactics. To add on to that, she's also known for her intelligence, determination, and strong will, which help her overcome challenges challenges and achieve her goals. Huntress was determined to take revenge against the criminal, Stephen Mandragora, for killing her parents. She infiltrated his high-security mansion but was caught by Martian Manhunter and dismissed from the League. To find Mandragora, she teamed up with Question, and together they discovered that Federal agents were keeping him in a safe house. The Question, on the other hand, goes by the name Vic Sage. He's a vigilante who protects the people of Hub City and is a skilled martial artist as well as a detective who operates as an investigative reporter in his civilian identity. To conceal his face, he wears a mask. In some versions of the character, he's portrayed as a paranoid conspiracy theorist, with his search for truth and meaning taking on a darker, more obsessive quality. Green Arrow and Black Canary had been assigned to protect Mandragora, but he proved to be difficult to deal with, and he escaped with the help of his henchmen. Huntress and Question arrived on the scene, and a fight broke out between the two pairs, with Huntress and Mandragora facing off. However, Huntress had a change of heart when she saw Mandragora's son arrive and hug his father, realizing that the man who killed her parents was also capable of love. She decided to spare his life and knocked him unconscious with a crane load. In the aftermath, Question confessed that he helped Huntress because he liked her, and they shared a kiss. This section of the story not only highlighted the personal motivations of the characters, particularly Huntress and Question, but also showcased the complex relationships between the Justice League members and the challenges they faced in their line of work. Shadow Thief Shadow Thief is a DC Comics villain that was birthed from the dark spirit of Qatar Hall, a member of the Thanagarian's alien species. The two entities split when Qatar Hall touched the Absorbicron, a powerful artifact. Shadow Thief's dark ambitions drive him to want to improve Qatar Hall's life by releasing Thanagarian technical secrets and becoming a villain for Qatar to defeat. Shadow Thief first made an appearance when Joseph Gardner, afterwards Qatar Hall, accompanied Shayera Hall to their old tomb in Egypt to explain their history. He assaulted Batman and sought to keep him away from the two as they conversed. Shadow Thief later collected several parts of the Thanagarian wreckage, giving the impression that he was just a regular thief. Yet, it was later found that he was much more than that. Shadow Thief waited to assault and capture Hawkman after he encountered Green Lantern, John Stewart. He was able to trap Vixen and kidnap John. Vixen and Shayera subsequently went to the museum to see if Carter knew anything, only to find Shadow Thief had bound John and Carter. He made John, Carter, and Shayera view their past through Absorbicron. Initially, Shayera thought Shadow Thief was their ancient ancient enemy, hath set who had once poisoned them. However, Shadow Thief disclosed that he was a part of Carter Hall, and proposed that Hall eliminate John to clear the path for Shiera. Despite this, Hall opted to release John from his captivity. As a consequence, Shadow Thief wounded John by fracturing his arm, but Hall succeeded in forcing him back into his own mind. Yeah. Seems that Mirror Master wasn't up to the task. Now it's my shot. I'm gonna Captain Boomerang, Captain Cold, Mirror Master, 
and Trickster. In the series, a particular episode focused on Flash and his rogues gallery of villains. To be specific, it included Captain Boomerang, Captain Cold, Mirror Master, and Trickster. The episode began with the Flash being honored by Central City for his heroic deeds. However, his celebration was interrupted by his four longtime enemies who had teamed up to ruin his reputation. The four villains began a series of pranks and attacks throughout the city, making the Flash look like a fool. The Flash did try to stop them, but they seemed to be one step ahead of him at every turn. The Flash became increasingly frustrated and started to doubt his abilities. However, he received encouragement from his fellow Justice League members, who reminded him of his importance and value as a hero. Meanwhile, the four villains were revealed to have been hired by the Trickster psychiatrist, who was seeking revenge against the Flash for causing the Trickster's mental breakdown. The Flash eventually discovered the truth behind the villains' attacks and confronted them in a final showdown. With the help of the Justice League, the Flash defeated the villains and ultimately saved the day. That trick always went over big in Egypt. Cersei, Ancient Evil Sorceress Cersei is an incredibly powerful sorceress in Greek mythology, who possesses immortality and the ability to manipulate reality and matter through her magic spells. She has a wide range of abilities, including altering minds, firing destructive magical energy blasts, creating illusions, reviving the dead, teleporting and transforming objects and beings. One of her most well-known abilities is her signature move of transforming men into various animals. Cersei isn't only powerful in her magical abilities, but is also an excellent manipulator, capable of deceiving even immortals and gods on multiple occasions. She's even managed to trick others without relying on her magic. During her time as consort to Ares, who was the ruler of Tartarus, it's possible that Cersei had some limited control over the dead. Not only this, but Cersei also possesses a magical mirror called the Mirror of Cersei, which allows anyone holding it to alter their features into that of another. This object is considered forbidden by the Olympians gods but has been stolen several times and used by Hercules. As a goddess-level sorceress, she's also granted with ageless immortality. One of her other most frightening abilities is her power to alter minds and control them utterly. She can also use this power to manipulate individuals to do her bidding. She can also manipulate the elements, including the use of rocks to imprison and gag Wonder Woman. She can also fire destructive magical energy blasts and direct physical shields through her magical prowess. Her sound manipulation ability allows her to project her voice over long distances with extreme pressure, and she also has limited clairvoyant potential, which enables her to detect guests on her island and the presence of other immortals in her company. She can create powerful illusions and teleport herself and others between dimensions, such as from Earth to Olympus. Brainiac 5 Bouncing Boy and Fatal Five. Brainiac Five is a member of the Legion and a descendant of the villainous Brainiac. He's the leader of the group and the brains behind the most wicked missions. He's a highly intelligent cyborg with advanced technological abilities, and his knowledge and expertise are crucial to the Legion's success. As the leader, Brainiac Five took charge of the mission to stop the Fatal Five from altering the timeline. He used his advanced intellect and technological skills to devise a plan for the Legion to follow, and he remained a calm and collected presence throughout the episode. Brainiac Five was instrumental instrumental in ensuring the success of the Legion's mission, and his quick thinking and strategic mind helped outmaneuver the villains at several points in the story. Bouncing Boy was another member of the Legion and served as the comic relief in the episode. His power allowed him to inflate his body like a ball and bounce around, making him a difficult target for the villains to hit. While Bouncing Boy didn't play a significant role in the plot as Brainiac 5 or the other Legion members, he provided some light-hearted moments and helped to break up the tension during the episode's more intense scenes. The Fatal Five, a team of thousands Rock, Asuada, Mano, Validus, and Emerald Empress are a formidable group of villains who possess a range of powers and abilities. They're determined to change history and seize control of the timeline, and they'll stop at nothing to achieve their goal. Throughout the episode, they engaged in several battles with the Legion of Superheroes, with both sides suffering casualties along the way. Ultimately, it was up to the Legion to stop the Fatal Five and preserve the timeline, leading to a climactic showdown between the two groups. Gentleman Ghost In the late 1800s, James Craddock, aka Gentleman Ghost, was born into a wealthy family with a father who eventually left him and his mother to fend for themselves. As he matured, Craddock aspired to impress and make his mother proud, vowing to provide her with many, many valuables and jewels. After his death, he became a ghost and gained the ability to possess people and become invisible. Unlike others, Gentleman Ghost was a soft-natured and sophisticated thief who preferred to steal rather than resort to violence. As a human, he stole out of necessity or greed, but as a ghost, he stole for the thrill of it, as he got pretty bored over the years. However, despite his immortality, he wanted to either pass on or be reborn as a mortal to enjoy 
enjoy life again. He held a strong grudge against those who cursed him and would seek out their reincarnations, but he was not above helping his enemies if it suited him. He was somewhat vengeful and unafraid of death. And with that, we come to the very end of the video. The Justice League and Justice League Unlimited series featured a diverse and fascinating cast of villains ranging from classic comic book foes to newly created adversaries. The writers and animators of the shows did an excellent job of bringing these villains to life, giving them distinct personalities and motivations that often challenge the superheroes in unexpected ways. From the world-conquering schemes of Darkseid and Brainiac to the personal vendettas of characters like Lex Luthor, the villains of the Justice League shows wicked and dynamic conflicts that help make the series some of the most beloved animated superhero adaptations of all time. These villains' evil deeds range from world domination to manipulating reality itself, and their schemes have threatened not only the heroes but the entire planet. Their relentless pursuit of power and control makes them a force to be reckoned with, and the Justice League must always be prepared to face those powerful foes. Do smash the like button if you enjoyed the video, and comment down your top three picks from these badass characters, and we'll see you at the next one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone. I'm not